second three-day awakening festival. The first one was held about maybe about three or four years ago. We held it at the Roman Institute, and we had uh, Dr. Blair, Wayne Chandler, Michael Frost, Bobby Hennett, um, and a lot of other people from the area. You know, one thing that happened that weekend, though, there was so much going on, you couldn't get to everybody. And folks got burned out. Those of us who put it on got burned out too a little bit, you know. So this time I'm doing it with a little more order, a little more space in it, so you get to hear the people who you want to hear, and they'll get a chance to stretch out and get deeply into their message. Because for the times we're living in now, so much craziness is happening that it's important for us to avoid getting caught up in the madness. You know, um, all life as we live it today is an illusion. And that's not just the line from the matrix, it is the actual truth of the thing. You know, we, we no longer know the spiritual foundation of things because we recognize the symbol. And as long as the symbol is there, we would act as if it has meaning. But it really has no meaning. A good example of that is the money. At one time, everybody had to have precious metal, gold or silver or whatever. You had a little chunk. You wanted to buy something, you would weigh it, and maybe cut off the chunk of gold, the chunk of silver, whatever. Well, when they came out with the dollar system, the government had all the gold and silver. And they gave us dollars, but they had the gold and silver to back up the dollars so the dollars still had a value. But then they went off the gold and silver standard. So now they, they just got dollar bills out here that, they, that, that they're printing with no monetary foundation behind it. So money ha only has the value that your faith gives it. And I ain't got no faith in no money. I tell you that right now. All I get, I spend, you know. I'm trying to spend it on the right thing. Maybe I can keep it a couple of days, but it's gone, you know. Because it doesn't mean anything. You know, um, all of us love the movie The Matrix. But as you remember in The Matrix, the only time they were sharp was when they jacked into The Matrix and went into the world of dreams, of, 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 of illusion. When they were in the actual reality, they were in the ship, driving through the, uh, the, the old subways of New York. They were eating gruel every day. They were dressed in burlap sacks. They didn't have nothing. They didn't want nothing. <laughs> you know, because that was the reality that they were dealing with. And they, and they knew if they got caught up on the money thing, the physical thing, they get sucked back in. That's what happened to Cypher. He said he was sick of it. He wanted to eat a steak. He knew what no wasn't no real steak there. He wanted to have two bras on his arm with blonde and big titty. He knew they wasn't there either. But he was just going to enjoy it for what it was. He was just sick of that gruel, you know. Well, we can't get caught up in that mess. But we got stuff to do. We are gathered here because our souls have given us notice that we better get on point. And once you receive that notice, you have to do something or else you feel guilty about it. Your guilt backs up on you, and you'll get some dis-ease. These four speakers this weekend are here to help keep us straight, to clarify some things, to open us up to some things, so we can do what we have to do to accomplish our soul's purpose in this incarnation. By nature of the extreme deepness of his thought, his logic, his reasoning, his presentation, and his seniority in the field. Our keynote speaker, Dr. Delbert Blair. Give him a big hand. Yeah.
Coming through there yet? Hello, hello, goodbye, goodbye. Testing, testing, testing. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, watch it go on the top. The, uh, the video camera will pick it up anyway. And can, can you all hear him speaking? Yeah, yeah, I'll be talking a long time. If I get a mic, uh, yeah, it'll yeah, help yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, we'll get it on later on. What happened to you when you did the tape on it? Yeah, maybe take the tape off and then that probably should do it. Well, first of all, let me thank all of you. Well, I guess I don't need it until he gets it on. Thank all of you for taking the time out, as he well put it. On a cold evening, but you had colder. I come from Chicago, so I know what cold is. I've been in Detroit. In fact, I had classes here in Detroit for a year and a half. So not much difference what you get, we get, or vice versa. Again. Let me start by saying I have respectfully uh, been referred to as an expert in many fields. My understanding that an expert is one who knows more and more about less and less. So as a consequence, I hope that I never become an expert. My expertise, if any, is one who wants to hopefully learn and study from the Creator's many works that I see around me. I like to refer to the Creator as the Universal Prime Creator. If that is the case and I seek to learn the wisdom from the Creator, then I will always be a pupil of the cosmos. So I'm not an expert. I know a lot of things about a lot of things, and I'm learning more every day. I will always be a pupil that helps to keep me young, young and helps me keep me sharp and Every day I learn something, sometimes from the most funny sources, great sources, believe me. Another adage that I like, uh, it goes something like, he who knows not and knows that he knows not, he is a fool. No, <coughs> he who knows not and knows not that he knows not, <laughs> he is a fool. <laughs> he who knows not and knows that he knows not, he is awakened, He's supposed to watch it. But he who knows and knows that he knows, he is wise. Listen to it. Now that's a very sexist statement because it uses he as a masculine principle. It doesn't say he, she, or she. What I've also found is there are a lot of females who have a lot of knowledge and some a lot of wisdom. Wisdom is hard to find in any gender, any race, any person. I did a lot of reading from a man known as J.A. A. Rogers. He has over 13 books and pamphlets, and they downed him because they said he was not a legitimate professor, scholar. I will let you know I have studied under many professors. I learned more from J.A. A. Rogers than I did from many of them. I don't care what his title was. I know what he had to say, and he reached me, and he helped me. There is a sister by the name of Dr. S, who writes under the name of Suzar. has a book called, um, in fact, I brought it. Not that I want you to go buy it, but if you choose to, find it. Uh, Blacked Out by White Walsh, it's a printed book. But to Suzar, he said, everything that I had said and more so I learned again from a female. And my mother, my dad left my home when I was eight years old. My mother raised me and she gave me the guiding principles and the energies and let me have enough latitude where I love study and she encouraged that. She walked me around to museums, I went to plays and all like that. So I don't want to get on a sexist or gender thing. Knowledge is not limited. Wisdom is only what you should find when you seek for it again. Kind of rising up just a little bit, not so serious, or so we're going to get very serious tonight, though, and some people are still coming in, of course. There are birds, and we attribute many attributes to birds. 
we have the saying, wise is an owl. And you've heard that one before, right? There is the white dove of peace. There is the black bird or crow, which usually stands for psychic ability and messages. They bring in, if you watch them, certain aspects of metaphysics into what they do. And of course, there's always the bluebird of happiness. All of these birds have one thing in common. They all fly, they all eat, and they all move. <laughs> so I like to say to a person again, I hope that the bluebird of happiness comes and sits on your shoulder, but hopefully he's constipated. <laughs> When I look at what's happening in the world, when I study, and I've studied metaphysics for 48 years, I have taught and practiced metaphysics for 30 years, even when it wasn't called that. And I guess I have lectured in every state in the United States, some foreign countries, and as I say, um, I use the word metaphysics when nobody else was talking about metaphysics. Now, it's okay to talk about. I think I got kicked out of more schools than they have invented, and I knew I would never get tenure because I asked too many questions and wanted real answers. I am a Baptist minister by ordainment and study. I don't practice and preach for the pulpit. I'm not a hypocrite. I found out that I didn't know what I knew later, and so I stopped. I'm sorry for Baptist ministry to hear that being said. Take any of them on for a scholarship, but I am not a hypocrite. I was supposed to be a politician. They wanted to vote me and run me for alderman there in Chicago, per se. But there's one thing I think the biggest oxymoron I've ever heard is an honest politician. Yeah. You hear that one? Yeah. I'm not a hypocrite. When I asked my teachers the tongue poignant questions, the things that really would have helped me, I didn't get honest answers. And so afterwards, I stopped going to them for my answers. I asked the Creator to guide me and lead me. And I have a tape, some of you, if you haven't heard me before, the tape called Close Encounters of the Fourth Time. I put it out the same week that Close Encounters of the Third Time was released. It's my own personal interface with what I think are extraterrestrials and it changed my entire life. I had asked up to that time that whoever was in charge of these great heavens of ours, the Creator, God, whatever you would want to call, that to help me to know that in this lifetime I would accomplish what I wanted to which was to gain all kind of energy and reasoning and understanding of whatever was going on in this planet so it didn't have to do Earth again. Yeah. Must have done it a few times because I just know I didn't want to do this with once. So if I'm about to make a mistake, stop me. And I always tell my audiences, if you've heard any of my mistakes, if you see and catch me in a lie, you're going to hear a lot tonight. Don't talk about me, hit the eyes, because I didn't know it was. You come tell me, we'll talk about it. If it is a lie, I won't tell that lie again. So if I tell you a lie, it's because of my ignorance. I like to speak truth, and I like to have truth broken back to me. But truth is a very strange bedfellow. It's never walked freely into any room or any place. It must always fight its way to the surface. And if it's strong enough, they try to take you from that truth. Many of you don't know, I have a wife who is now very sick. And she wasn't sick three months ago. Back very healthy. We loved to dance. We entered the dance contest. And so. I went on a lecture tour. We went to three states. And when I got on the, in the airport, I was profiled. Uh, scanned with these, whatever you call them, which is equal to 13 logins each wave. And I'm sick enough to know that because I studied uh, I'm an, also an engineer, and I study electronics and loading and radiation in my field. Protested about it, and of course, then they threatened to take me in the back room. So I said, boy, if I get out of sight of the public, I'm really in trouble, so I shut my mouth. 
Then got on the plane, there was a strange smell on the plane. She and I both noticed that. And we went to one city. After that we went to another city, strange smell on the plane again. In a hotel room, strange smell in a hotel room. Went to the booth, strange people coming over to the booth. And then she dropped. She was going down until three weeks ago and I called on all the heavens I could and everybody that knew me and I didn't know know me and I say one thing, a lot of people who knew me that I didn't know knew me and they began to give me direction. So I came up with some devices. I've already studied herbistry and I used to work with Dr. Fulton and been with Fulton for 19 years. I had a master teacher there. And so it took every application that I could come up with 50 different kind of herbals and things, all kind of methodology and a device, but the doctor who came and brought it to me got sick. So they don't like what I said. But now they want war, they've got it. Everything I know about them now, I'm going to talk about it. Yes. I'm not going to go willingly and I'm not going to be afraid and when they hurt my heart by bothering my wife, it is not war. Yeah. So they take me out one time. But if I can reach a lot of people, unfortunately last week I called in on coast to coast and took another guy to task out there who was spinning craziness and because I was literally receptive and got past the screener, hopefully 13 million people would me take him to task before they stop. We live on a very strange planet. We don't begin, in most cases, to even understand the planet that we live on. We have races on this planet. As I understand, seven of them, maybe eight if they hybrid and genetically manipulate genes now. And we still don't understand that most planets don't have that many mixtures. This is a very special planet. It's one that you can learn from very quickly or you can go under very quickly. What is happening now, and I almost don't know where to begin, is that they are trying to make the people on this planet just a little bit above cattle. They talk about mad cow, and yet they grind up and you eat the mad cow meat and you don't even know it. Possibly you don't, but many are. You notice now many of the fast food joints are selling you hamburgers at prices that are beyond belief. It makes the castle look like it's nothing. Chicken, get it all over the place. But now they found out that they saw the 35,000 chickens in Europe. They started, uh, I think it was 25,000 in Colorado. And you think that they, because these uh, chickens were diseased, you really think that they just burned them all, and dumped them all, all that profit? I think not. Not with the track record this country has. I would bet against that. Who's eating them? What happens when you eat them? When you look up in the sky, when you can see it nowadays, over 240 major cities here in the United States, states, you're being sprayed every day of your life. You're being sprayed with what I like to refer to as Kim Bio Trails. Notice I did not say Kim Trails. I understand Kim at no, we didn't say Kim Trails. I didn't say bio trails. What did I say? Kim bio trails. They have nothing to do with contrails that people who fly on jets and in jets and sea jets think that trails what it's leaving. Contrails are formed by moisture in the air that's cold, and as that air springs over the fuselage and tail assembly of the plane, it forms droplets of ice which leaves a little trail, no more than 10 or 15 feet, on a very cold day behind the plane. That's a contrail, and it comes from jet exhaust. What I have seen, and if you have looked up, and you could see three years ago, it's been that long since you can really see a clear sky living in the United States, are things that go back 30 and 40 miles behind the plane. 30 and 40 miles. Don't even waste time calling that a con trail. Those are chem bio trails. 
in those Kim Bio trails, you won't believe what has been found. It's researched by William Campbell, Douglas, Tiffert, Carnicum, and William Thomas. They have come up that they have barium, aluminum, mercury, non-human T cells, manure, pneumococcus pyringus, pneumococcus meningitis, and who knows whatever else at the time they choose to spray up there. You breathe that. It goes on your lawn, on your house, on your pets, on your head. It goes everywhere. It goes into your water supply. It goes on the lakes. And you breathe it because it's particulated matter that goes into your lungs. They're talking now about SARS. What does SARS mean? What's the acronym for SARS? I mean, what's the thing? What? There you go. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Syndrome is something you don't understand, but it's happening anyway. Well, everything in our old life now is a syndrome. <laughs> That's my little religious way of saying everything you do now, they're trying to control. And now we refer to it now as um, SARS is now Mars. Think of the planet. Moderate Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Now they got the Asians upset. But then they had Asian flu, flu African flu, uh, West Nile flu. It always comes from every place but where it originates, right here in this blankly blank country with these research scientists who are mad, have no spirit, and believe in the wrong gods. And then you look to see what brought this on. In these Kim Bio trails, the planes that fly them go at 38,000 feet and above. When they first started out, noticeably about three years ago, four years ago at the very most, not past that, it took a long time for those spray things to diffuse into the atmosphere. Now, they do it in six seconds. They have the gauzes, we have pictures of the gas and the gauzes that they have again which spreads the particulated matter all over the place. And now they even add mixture with other ones. You can see planes coming in threes from the west. You'll see them coming from the south. It is an, a matter of planes spraying you over your cities, farms, houses, lakes, every day. Interesting enough, during the World Trade Building implosion, they didn't stop. Well, what was the executive order and the order from the present administration that went out there again? All commercial, non-commercial, and private planes do not fly. Whatever was up there flew, which means that they didn't obey your government representative's order, which means that either your government representative can't do anything about what they're doing or are part of it, and it's so important that when they told everything else to stop, they continued to fly. Ask some executive why, as you give me tests on my car for its exhaust system and ruin my car by spinning it around to see if the exhaust will particulate, and why would you tell me that there might be some enemy and terrorist to come over here and release some kind of a biological chemical, and why would you tell me all this stuff? Do you allow me to be sprayed with the same damn things every day? And I don't like to curse, but nowadays they got me doing that too. Madness. Absolute insanity, but the people that should wake up the most are the people usually more asleep. I've been in the streets, I'm not doing my lawn. I say, hey, what's that up there? Just to test people, just to look up. And if you stop and you look up, people will stop and they'll look up. They'll look up. And they spray in there. Oh, that's a contrail. That's from the airport down there. Keep right on going. I've done it to white people. Of course, I made it a study. And it was Latinos, I think with black people. A few will stop and say, yeah, it's been a shame. Make no conversation about it because they're afraid to talk. I don't know. Most people still look up at just another plane flying over. That that they're spraying has now created a plasma field all around this planet. If we were to come from outer space, 
And I give you an example. You looked at it, you'd see a haze, almost like what's around Venus at this present time. If you've ever been on a highway and come into a big city, you would notice a dome or haze over that city, especially in the summertime when it used to be clear skies. Notice my phraseology. Used to be clear skies. That haze is for not only hydrocarbon emission, but it's the exhaust of everything that's polluted and so in that city. Plus, it doesn't do well with the surrounding atmosphere, so it formed a dome. Now, the whole planet is a dome. The ocean is within a dome. A dome of plasma that is very negative to anybody that breathes oxygen through their lungs. The chem biotrail hazard is one of the most caustic, problematically infectious possibilities that your government is doing nothing about municipal, state, or federal. And you breathe it every day. If anything that I've said about that is true and open up a whole web page and begin to study about it, you need to do something for your immune system because they're not going to do anything for you. That's just one detriment. The water supply in most major cities now is supposed to go through filtration and supposed to be very good to drink. In fact, it's been said that in Chicago, they have one of the best filtration plants going. People from Japan came to study it. They built it, of course, in after the World's Fair Expedition and the fire was in Chicago. It is a very up-to-date thing. And in Chicago, about three years ago, we had a flooding that went on. You probably read about downtown Chicago getting flooded. How many remember that at all? We just see some hands, see what kind of audience I have. Few of you. Okay. They also had a flooding on the west side of Chicago. And the water was that high in the streets. This was over almost a four mile area. Question was asked, well, why didn't they open up the locks and let the water out back into Lake Michigan? The mayor of Chicago gave a very interesting answer, and I don't think a lot of Chicagoans, because I held regular lectures there, understood what the man said. He said, I couldn't do anything about it. I try to, and I understand that, hey, I, I, I don't run Chicago. I mean, I don't run it. I, I don't care. <laughs> Look, this, we understand that Chicago is an international port, and Lake Michigan is under international control. Well, you've got what? Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, Superior. If you've got one of those lakes under control, the whole thing is under control by an international government? You know, you got a lake out here too. Like you got rivers and waterways. In fact, you share things with Canada. That's all under an international... When did you hear about that being under an international control? Do you vote on that? Okay. They can or cannot do anything to the water that is not okay by an international control arm of whoever this new world order or whatever you're calling it is about. So he couldn't open up the lock because they didn't give him permission. We just had another funny thing that happened in Chicago. I'm just going to show you that this goes on every hour of every day. Folks, we are a mess in a mess. You may have heard there's a little field called Midsfield right in downtown Chicago. It's excellent because Little private planes can fly in there and land. They don't have to go to Midway or O'Hare. Not that I would want to go there anymore, but whatever. And the idea is rumored that eventually there will be gambling in Chicago. And of course, there is no gambling in Chicago now. Right? Yeah, okay. Anyway. But if you know that business people used to be that the Islamic people and the Muslims and so came in and spent money in big cities here in America. I don't know if that will continue, but it seems, still seems to go on. Why do I say that? Because when you have rich people coming in, they would like a little landing strip. They don't want to go to big common airports. They want to land, take off, and get on out of here. And they'll drop a million dollars on you right now, a hundred thousand dollars. So you want that. You want private airports. But 
mayor said that he wanted to make that whole area in downtown into a marshland. I know I didn't hear me very well, did you? He wanted to make it into a marshland. You know what, what is a marshland? Anybody give me an idea what's a marshland? Marshland. The aquarium, the shed aquarium there, it is one of the largest aquariums in the United States. It now will be the largest because they've extended it out into the lake. They've got a five million gallon tank now out there in the lake where you can get all kind of different kind of fishes and so on and so forth like this. He wanted to make it to a marshland. Last, ten days ago, during the night, he cut X's in Mixfield. If you heard about it, with a gutter, concrete gutting machine, and didn't ask anybody or say anything to anybody. He just did it. Because he had. But who's been visiting our mayor recently? Rumsfeld, Ashcroft, and the big man himself, the one who was selected into the White House. <laughs> Wonder what kind of marching orders he gave. But now, there it is. Now, they'll build a marshland. Keep that in the back of your mind, because as I drop these tidbits, when you finally reach the one conclusion only possible when you deal truthfully with facts, that's one of the ones I just dropped. Also downtown, as I explained, about four years ago, there was a big flood. During that flood, I found out some very other interesting things, that the Stevens Building downtown had a, a reactor, a nuclear reactor to heat the building. I don't remember the city council asking me for my vote and say, we're going to put a nuclear reactor in the Stevens Building downtown. Blair, you're going to vote for that? In fact, I don't remember seeing a proposition on it. In fact, until it came out, no one knew there was any kind of atomic anything down there, heating plant or otherwise, in downtown municipal Chicago. But there was. And they were worried about the water being contaminated from this heating system. Were we being tested in Chicago? Did they have a test installation in Chicago? Well, they wouldn't, but they would do that in Detroit. I know that. <laughs> when we understand that with mad cow disease, chicken messed up disease, pig messed up disease, and everybody knows you should be pigs anyway, that's why we don't have any barbecue places. And consequently, with all of these various animal possible diseases here, the last thing we should want to do is to put any other kind of animal plus into our veins, right? Because we need enough of it as it is. Hard to break that meat eating habit. I don't think you should either if you don't want to. But now they tell you that you need to be vaccinated in the inoculation against anthrax, smallpox, and I guess now when they can isolate it, whatever SARS is. I heard rumors that SARS is mumps and measles recombined by some crazy, I'm sorry, they're not crazy, they're mad. There's a difference. Intelligently mad. Psychopath. When they now have whatever this is going on, we now have to now worry about getting shots for it. We could talk for the next four hours about shots, vaccinations, and inoculations. Let me just say that there are no vaccinations and inoculations that will prevent smallpox or anthrax. But what they can do is to get your immune system so messed up that anything comes along, you can get. Within that is animal pus, sometimes mercury, aluminum, and all other kind of things, even formaldehyde. Well, by the way, what do they use formaldehyde for? While you're alive, right? <laughs> no? I said something wrong again there. You could have heard me what I didn't say, didn't you? Right? So now we have to worry about the vaccinations and inoculations in addition to which 
they started a war recently. Now this war has been in the making for 35 years and in 1991 they did part one of this great big cameo series, Gulf War One. <laughs> Little seems to be understood that the soldiers, sailors, Marines, Air Force, so we would call this collectively the Armed Forces of the United States, were exposed to not only depleted uranium, another word I won't say, I don't want to get you know, closed up, but at the same time, other things that were there that produced what is called the Gulf War Illness. The armed forces personnel that were exposed to the Gulf War illness were told that they had a syndrome, that nothing they did at the Gulf War was responsible for them getting sick. If they were sick, they needed psychiatric help. If you read the reports of nurse, major nurse Joyce Riley, how many have heard of her? On a one-woman campaign, I love the woman, she's white by the way, so I know we shouldn't like her, right? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I mean, you have to like people that are black and hate everybody that's what they can't. Okay. <coughs> anyway, she went and she started to awaken people because she began to see these young, and you know, they don't take old men like me into the armed services. Because I know who this is. Yeah. <laughs> but they will take these young guys full of grim, bigger and muscles, but they haven't got the muscular up here yet, and they give them a spiel, and they get their emotions up, and that adrenaline and testosterone goes, and bam, they're out, and they're killing in the name of freedom, a rock of freedom, and Vietnam freedom, and Korea freedom, and, and the other thing that these old wise men send out the young boys to do, and then sit back and watch the destruction of growing weeds, and useless eaters. Why do I call those young men and women growing weeds and useless eaters? Because I'm quoting from the report from Iron Mountain who said that they could afford to get rid of two and a half million people here in the United States and two and a half billion people off the planet and they do it. Growing weeds and useless eaters, they're the ones that fight the rich man's war. And your mothers allow that to happen because you're afraid to do anything. Your dad say, well, what can I do about it? If I stop them, I'll go to jail. I don't know what you can do about it. I know what the history they've done about it. When they finally wake up as to what's happening. So as we look at that aspect, they found that the Gulf War veterans who asked for help were told they didn't have anything. That's the same thing they said with just the experience, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You don't have nothing. You've got no syphilis. We don't know what's wrong with you. It's all in your brain. It's all just a matter of principle. Wake up and don't be so paranoid. Well, I would tell everybody here, I am neurotic. I am so neurotic it frightens me. You know why I'm neurotic? Because they're psychotic, and it's like an ant in a spider's web. If you're not neurotic, you're already psychotic. Join me in being neurotic, because just because you're neurotic doesn't mean that you're out to get you. And they are out to get you. How many just follow what I just said? I see some faces there, and we do it kind of fast. How many didn't understand? Let me not even go fast. How many didn't understand what I just said? Neuroticism is a nervous disorder that works on the brain. The neurosis is that you begin to react poorly to situations and things because you can't handle them. Psychotic is crazy and mad. You do everything from schizophrenia to dementia, say precox, you do everything that's crazy and mad. If I am a ant and I see myself in a web, and I hear breath and I hear a pounding of feet, I might get a little neurotic because that psychiatric spider might be about the business of eating you. 
So, I say I'm neurotic because I think that they are about the business to get me. And because I'm neurotic, I'm only responding to a psychotic individual. When you can take hundreds of thousands of people and experiment with them, create hell for them, give them Agent Orange, Agent Greens, Agent Purple, Agent Yellow, and they do it consistently, and you see you're amongst them, you might get a little neurotic. So if you're not, you're already crazy. Mm -hmm. So I say you're already psychotic. Did that break it down enough for you now? Anybody still didn't understand what I just said? Neurosis is a good thing. If there's a monster about to eat you, That's right. some people will actually go psychotic and go crazy. There's madness on this planet. With that Gulf War thing, not only did they mess up the DNA of all of those young men and women, because there were women serving there too. Volunteer Army, by the way, though. They thought they were going to get an education. They did. <laughs> they truly did. But the DNA was so bad that when they went home, made love to their whoever, ate, slept in a home, it was communicable, and the women that became pregnant by those guys now have all kind of malformed babies, breached, can't carry the term, first trimester anomalies, things looking like tadpoles in their womb, other than when they should be in the second trimester. Messed up every kind of way you can think of. Nerves messed up with the nerve gas that they were exposed to. And they would not treat them in the VA hospitals for the longest until such a big issue. Class action suits were started by these vets who finally woke up that the country that they had served and the government administration that they were so distinguished in fighting for to bring that over to somebody else was now working on them first. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing changed. You now have by reports now. And you go and believe what I see in the press, right? If you can't believe it in the press, you can't believe it, can you? You can? Oh. Wisdom sits in these seats, huh? That the same thing that they did to the first batch that they sent over, and now they're saying they want 300,000 over there. The fourth army hasn't even gotten there yet, so look out Syria. Now you've got all these other divisions, even the 101st Airborne over there, right in the middle of Baghdad, right in the key there, they're going to find that, that, what do they call it they're looking for over there? I forgot, they started out looking oh, for yes. sustain, then they went out insane, then they wanted to find, what, somebody else they were looking for? Weapons of mass? I knew you knew. You know why they were over there, because they didn't. I mean, they know too, right? They're looking for weapons of mass destruction. Well, they gave it to them. They ought to know what they're looking for. Uh, 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 I didn't even say that. That came from somebody. Else. Couldn't have been me. But over there now, they've gotten three to five shots. And I understood they didn't want to start the April campaign into that. By the way, what month is this? They don't want to go over there in the desert during this country. They had to end that very soon because it would be too hot and they didn't have the anthrax and smallpox vaccines there yet. So now, those young men and women have at least three to five shots with poisons in their body and possibly anthrax, what's another word? Smallpox. And there are no vaccines for anthrax and smallpox. All you can do is to test. And can you imagine now what's going to happen to their immune system? And of course, they have to fly back, swim back, walk back or get back mm -hmm. some way. So now they got to cross the oceans which are polluted, the air which they're spraying every day, and you're breathing it, and you already now have a possible compromised immune system. Oh, they're winning the war. No. They're fighting a battle and losing the war for humanity. But they're young. Mm -hmm. 